We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Welcome everyone to our Sunday worship on behalf of Sleaford Methodist Circuit. My name is Paul Coburn and we're going to continue in worship as we sing. With gladness we worship, rejoice as we sing. Please join in or just follow the words on the screen. It's up to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you not only for making us, but for your constant love and care. We thank you that though we cannot see you, you have promised that you are always with us. You have promised that no matter what we do or where we go or what we are facing, you will never ever leave us. We praise you that wherever we look, we can see the signs of your being with us. We thank you for making yourself known in Jesus, that he shares everything life means to us. We thank you that he is like a shepherd, that he knows each one of us by name and cares about each of us every day. He is the one who will help us guide us, lead us, and keep us safe. We thank you for those who care for us when we are sick or in hospital. We thank you for family and friends whose love and kindness make each day special. We thank you for opportunities to help other people and to show them your love and care. Forgive us when we keep your love and care for ourselves and when we do not help others when we can. Forgive us for always wanting the biggest and the best of everything, for being greedy, selfish and jealous. By your Holy Spirit, give us the strength we need to follow Jesus 
We ask this in his name. Amen. And let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The set epistle for today is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11 verses 1 to 3, and then uh, 8 to 16. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger, in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with, with foundations whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country. A heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Thanks be to God for his word. One of the virtues that I think is in short supply these days is the virtue of patience. We're not very good at waiting for things. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, just to show that I have got them all memorised. But patience is one of them. And we're not terribly good at it. I, it's been a while since I read um, a book called slower, all about uh, the, the need actually to just slow things down a bit, not take things at such a hectic pace. It wasn't a Christian book, it was uh, an analysis of the way society is speeding up. And I don't remember much about the book now, other than uh, the example of uh, the symbol of why society is, is faster and more impatient than it was. And that's uh, in a lift, you often get a, 
a door close button. Uh, actually, I'm not sure you do see so many of these these days, but it was perhaps a thing that was more common 10, 20 years ago. But I can understand the door open button in a lift. You want the doors to open uh, if someone's rushing towards the lift and uh, you, you don't want them to miss out, open the doors. Uh, or if you have a sudden panic and want to get out. But door close buttons are really only there for impatient people who are in the lift. They're waiting for the lift to take them to a uh, the next floor up or down whichever it may be and the lift isn't moving and they want the lift to get on with it and so they press the door close button as a signal to say we're ready get on get on with it lift close the doors get moving the book that i read said that in most lifts the door close button does nothing i don't know if that is true or not but the claim was that it was only there to give impatient people the, the sense that they were doing something rather than just having to wait on the whim of the lift to decide when it was time to close the door and move. I don't know. But the fact that people do push that button, whether it does something or not, is a symbol of impatience. We can't wait just a few seconds for the lift to do, to do it. We've got to be hurrying things up. I want to get to the next floor that I'm going to, so come on, get on with it. In a slightly more serious setting, imagine uh, life in our parents and grandparents' generation. Uh, the early married life people started a home with practically nothing. And if you've talked to your parents and grandparents, you, you'll know they saved up for things, whether it was a, a washing machine or a dining table or a, a sofa to sit on, or as the technology came into existence, television. These things they saved up for patiently. They waited until they had the money and then they bought them and there was great rejoicing in the household when finally they had a dining table to eat off, for example. These days, people don't want to wait. These days, you can buy what you need as soon as you're married on your credit card and then pay for it. And I'm not saying whether that's good or bad. I'm just pointing out it's different. Instead of saving up and paying, you get what you want and then you pay for it afterwards. That seems to me a symbol of impatience. We're not very good at waiting. The writer of Hebrews talks about people who were waiting patiently in faith, trusting God to keep his promises. And they were prepared to wait a long time, even and this is the verse that struck me as I read this through. All these people were still living in faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And that had me thinking, well, how as a preacher am I supposed to promote ideas about faith in God, trusting God to keep his promises and waiting patiently until he does, when we may end up dying before God's kept his promises. The writer here is commending these people for their faith, but admitting that they never got to see God's promises fulfilled or not quite never got to see them, but they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. They saw something of them on the horizon, but they never received them uh, in, in fullness. And, and it got me thinking, what sort of promise is, is that? When we put our trust in God, when we expect God to do something to help us, we don't want him to do it one day distantly in the future, even after we've died. We want it a bit closer than that. And isn't it right sometimes not to be patient? 
For example, we pray for an end to war. We don't like to see nations fighting and people dying as a result. And God has promised that there will be a time of peace when swords will be beaten into plowshares. Or we, we have God's promise for a time when there'll be no more mourning and sadness. Sickness, disease will be no more. People will not suffer as they do now. And why should we be patient for those things? If God's going to do these things, why doesn't he do them now? It's uh, important that war ends because people are suffering. At the moment, we have the conflict in Ukraine where people are dying and suffering in all kinds of other ways. And we don't want God to put an end to that, oh, sometime in the distant future. We want God to do something about it now. Every day's delay, more people are suffering. If there's someone who's suffering through sickness, we don't want healing eventually. We want healing now so that the suffering can end. And th there is quite a, a valid argument for telling God to get a move on. Why are you hanging about, Lord? Why not do something straight away? Some of the, the Psalms take this attitude. How long, Lord, they, they cry out. How long are we going to have to wait? You, you've promised help. You've promised to save us. You've promised to do something. Get on and do it. Don't leave us hanging around waiting. And this is very much the opposite attitude to the one that Hebrews talks about, where people wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled and they keep faith in God even if those promises never come true in their lifetime. Is there a, a difference between those sort of promises and our expectations for God to do something now to stop the suffering? And maybe the, the kind of things that people put their faith in for those long-term uh, promises are to do with, with the bigger issues. Um, the end of war as we know it, peace on earth, God's kingdom of, of peace, the end of suffering, the end of pain, when there'll be no more death, no more pain, no more suffering. God makes these promises and says these will come about one day, uh, but, they're, but they're big things. They're not going to happen quickly. We must wait patiently for them to come about one day. Maybe they're the kind of things that we, we should be patient about. What was Abraham's promise? Let's look at him because he may actually help us to understand this. And Abraham's promise was about a large family. Not just that he would have a child of his own, even though he was older and beyond normal childbearing age, and his wife Sarah was certainly beyond uh, the, the age when she would normally be able to have children. But God's promise was, you will have a child, and from that child there'll be many, many descendants. It was important to the people uh, of Abraham's day that they were able to continue their, their line and that there would be others uh, following on from them. And that promise was a very personal promise to Abraham. It wasn't about the big picture. It was about Abraham himself having a family that continued beyond his own death. And he did get to see the start of it. He got to see Isaac being born. I mean, Isaac on his own isn't more than the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. Uh, you can count Isaac very easily. Um, although in fact, interesting sideline, you may remember Abraham did have other children. He had Ishmael that uh, he conceived through, uh, or was conceived through Hagar, the slave girl. But it was through his wife, Sarah, that Isaac was born and became the legitimate heir. The other interesting fact is that actually, there's a, a verse somewhere that tells of uh, Abraham having more children through another uh, mother uh, after Sarah had died. Uh, it wasn't just 
Ishmael and Isaac. There were one or two others as well who never became famous and just get, barely get a mention in the Bible, but they were there. But even then, they're hardly uh, numerically the equivalent of the stars in the sky. That bit of the promise was something that only came much, much later. Many generations later, the, Abraham, the descendants of Abraham had grown so numerous. But Abraham started to see it. He started to see the promise fulfilled in Isaac and his birth. And maybe those big promises that we have, that war will come to an end, that there will be um, an end to pain and suffering, we, we start to see now there are moments of hope moments when uh, our spirits are lifted and we think we're heading in the right direction sometimes it might seem we've taken three steps forward and two back or in the worst case two steps forward and three back but th th there are those signs of hope remember when the berlin wall came down uh, great excitement and, and that seemed to be very symbolic of some big changes going on uh, and an end to the uh, the terror of communism then we had um, the Arab Spring and, and the hope that was developing there and yes we still are struggling there are still wars there's still oppression but there are signs of hope something for us to to be encouraged by I've been reading a, a bit of history uh, recently and uh, if you go back to the Middle Ages and uh, the, the earlier times in our history and even a few centuries ago, um, life was, was very much harder then than it is now. Uh, whatever you think of the politicians now, at least they're not in fear of having their uh, heads cut off because they disagree with other politicians or disagree with the queen or the king. But that's what used to happen. And the ordinary folk, uh, they, they were, they were uh, so abused and so misused through, through taxes, through battles where they were killed indiscriminately. And sadly, yes, that is still happening in some parts of the world. Thankfully, um, I and I suspect many of you watching this live in a nation where uh, we can sleep safely in our beds and not expect to be suddenly raided by the police and whipped off to prison for no reason. Uh, we, we don't see uh, people wandering with guns in our streets and, and so on. Th there are big improvements in large parts of the world. Things are moving gradually. We've still a long way to go, but the signs of it, we can start to see that, that God's promises will be fulfilled. And so we still have faith and we still need the urgent prayers. We still need sometimes to call out desperately to God, to God. We can't wait. You need to sort this out, Lord. But we still need to trust God for the big picture. He's not forgotten us. He's not abandoned us. He's working towards it. Some of these glorious promises that God made are not going to be fulfilled and sorted out just in uh, a day or two, a week or two, a year or two, even over a lifetime. They're, they're long-term projects, but we can be part of it and we can still hold true to our faith. But one of the promises to Abraham, which I think the writer to the Hebrews is talking about, comes out in our gospel reading, which I'll come to in a moment. But to introduce it, we're going to sing again. This is a simple chorus. We'll sing it through a couple of times. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Let's sing together.
I think I implied earlier that the the promise that God made to Abraham was about large uh, numbers of children, a huge number of descendants, and it was. And it was largely for Abraham's benefit that he, he could look forward to um, a legacy left, not just through one son, but through uh, many descendants that would, would follow on. But th there's actually a more important legacy that comes from Abraham's line. When God first sent him to a new land, he did make another promise, and that was that through Abraham, all nations would be blessed. What God was doing was not just for this one man as a, a help to him and a, a benefit to him and a promise that was just about him and his family. God's promise was that through Abraham, all nations would be blessed. And we know that that came true most of all in one particular descendant of Abraham called Jesus. Jesus came to reveal God to us. He came to die for us, to rise again. He came as the promised Messiah, the Saviour that was long expected and hoped for, wished for. Abraham's descendants were many, but this one in particular was the one through whom God was able to bless all people. And that promise was true, made true in the coming of Jesus, but he's still not fully fulfilled. Jesus himself still spoke of the time when he would come again and would bring about his kingdom in some more dramatic way. The, the set gospel reading for today uh, includes these verses. This is Luke chapter 12 and reading from verse 35 uh, to 40. Be dressed, ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whom, whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Well, there's a lot of thoughts in there, but the, the strange one is this idea of the master arriving home after partying for much of the night at a wedding banquet, finding his servants still awake, and watchful and ready, and as a, a reward, he serves them. He sits them down at the table and, and acts as their servant. Uh, it's very unrealistic. I don't think even the most generous of masters would arrive back home in the middle of the night and treat their servants quite like that. Um, but it, it's a parable, it's a story to illustrate a point. And it's illustrating the important point that Jesus is not only our Lord and Master, he also comes to serve. There's the famous uh, Graham Kendrick song, This is Our God, the Servant King. And, and we see Jesus doing this when he washes the disciples' feet, the act of a servant. He is master, he is Lord, but he comes to serve. But what we need to do is to watch out, to be ready, because we don't quite know when all this will happen. And this comes back to our faith, our expectation. Yes, we have to be patient. It may happen in our lifetime. It may not. We've seen the start of it. We've seen Jesus come and die on the cross and be raised again. So we know God is at work in Jesus. We're yet to see the fulfillment of the promise when God's kingdom in all its glory will come to this world and Jesus will be acknowledged by all and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This still is something that we've yet to see and we may not see in our lifetime, but 
if we have faith, we can see it far off and welcome it already. With those thoughts in mind, let's pray for this world. Let us pray. Lord God, we trust in your promises for a world of peace, a world without suffering. And we confess that we are impatient to see this happen. We long for suffering that we see around us to end quickly. And we pray for that. We pray for healing for those that we know are unwell. We pray for peace in Ukraine, in other war-torn parts of our world. We pray for an end to oppressive government, that people can be set free to worship you, to live their lives in peace, to have successful livelihoods, to prosper in all ways. Lord, we long to see that happening in our world. We thank you for signs of hope when we see even the glimmer of such things happening. But we pray for your presence to, to change this world. Help us in the strength of Christ to be part of that process, that your kingdom may truly come on this earth as it is in heaven. And all this we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. And now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and give you peace and give you faith and keep you patient as you wait eagerly for his coming. God be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>